Hey everyone, this is Wolf Bandit, and I'm gonna show you how to install Hellcat paddle shifters. Pretty awesome. First thing you're gonna need before you do anything you're thinking about buying them is get one of these Z Automotive tasers. It allows you to unlock in the menu to be able to enable paddle shifters for cars that don't have them. Now, if you're just trying to upgrade your smaller stock paddle shifters to the bigger Hellcat ones, then you can just follow this without even needing one of these. So very first thing you gotta do is disconnect a negative battery terminal so it doesn't have any power for the airbags. And usually I leave it unplugged, unhooked for at least 20 minutes before I even start doing anything. And tuck it down. And also remember to leave your trunk open because you can't get it back open if you close it. The next step after disconnecting the battery would to be get the airbag out, which there are little holes on either side. When you need something small, just stick in there. I'm using this little T-handle tool to get in there, and you kind of feel for the guides in there, and just keep on pushing in until you feel it click. It's kind of like a metal spring on either side that releases it, and then uh, it pops out. There, got it to pop out. It does take a little bit of patience, and then uh, you get it to pop out. And what I saw one person do is you can just kind of shove this up here, turn it sideways a little bit, or something. But yeah, or you don't plug it. It's up to you. I prefer not to unplug airbags. But I might have to because it keeps on falling. <laughs> I'm going to show what you're actually trying to push. It's those right there on either side. You have to push in. And uh, you can see there's a little guide there. You can kind of feel it. If you put in slightly, maybe like half inch to inch, then you feel it. It's not too hard of a spring, so it looks like you got to push hard, but you don't. But you do have to push in pretty far, probably about two inches, and then it releases. And I wiggled it a little bit, and then it just popped out. Next step on either side is to uh, pop off these little covers. Just use a little flat blade and they should come right off. There you go. Of course I dropped it, but no big deal. And then inside there you get a couple Torx bits. And uh, that's how you get it out to replace it. So there's three Torx bits, Torx screws you gotta take out. One on the front, two in the back, one to take the buttons out. And there's another one right behind it, right there. They're all T20s. For these to take out, you do have to turn the steering wheel that way, depending on how long your screwdriver is. I probably should have got a shorter one, but hey, do whatever you have to do with the tools you have. I do have more tools, just too lazy to dig them out. <laughs> so after you remove the buttons on the front, you can see the wire right here, traces around, goes right up there to the plug up there. Just remove it and route the new uh, paddle shifter in. It's not too hard. And here's with the new Hellcat longer paddle shifter and those are solid aluminum. Part numbers are right there. I got them on eBay. They're usually about 90 to 100 bucks. Um, sometimes seem cheaper, but they're real Mopar parts. So I'd rather get stuff to trust than uh, possibly fake ones that don't work. But they are nice and big, are solid aluminum. They feel great. They can actually have some weight to them, so I can't wait to see what they feel like while driving. Another key tip, pay attention to where the cables route. And you can see how they route around the stud where the screw goes. That's very important, so when you put the airbag in, you don't want it to pinch any wires or cut them, or possibly not even go back in correctly. Very important to pay attention to details like that when working with wiring. Here's a little better view of the wiring, why it's important. See how it's tucked all the way, nice out of the way. And when you pull it out, it gets all messy. You can see all routed nice and neat there. Very important. Fits through perfect there to plug on the end. And uh, these little plugs. 
You gotta pay attention to how they work. So you can see how there's a little push thing you push down right there. And then it just pulls right out. Make sure you don't push too hard. Make sure you push enough because it's not the biggest deal with uh, newer cars, but as soon as you get a little age or in a hot area, they use plastic clips. Love to snap. And uh, then you're looking at a pretty expensive part because that's the steering column wiring harness or you gotta tape it together or jerry rig it or something like that. So be careful. Yay, they are all installed. The last thing to do is to push the airbag in. And you can kind of see it lined up and then you just push nice and hard like that and it should just go right in. Yeah, it definitely takes two hands. Put one hand here, one hand on the other side and just push straight forward pretty quick, pretty firmly and I'll snap in. I'll use some force button as you can see, all in.